Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing a complete rebuild, ground up, bottom up of a BMW N55 B30 engine. Uh, check out one of my other videos for the teardown and cleaning. Uh, so where we're starting from not right now is that the block has been cleaned. It has been painted, uh, including the uh, bed plate that's been cleaned and painted. Um, bores have been honed and measured. ABC, uh, varying depth uh, one, two, three, have uh, measured the bores. Uh, the deck of the block has been stoned uh, just to uh, remove any surface imperfection, no type of a material removal, just uh, doing a surface prep. Bottom has been cleaned, main journal bores has been cleaned. Uh, spray nozzles has been removed. Uh, air has been blown out through each of the uh, main bearing uh, journal supply holes as well as the piston uh, spray nozzle holes uh, to make sure that there's no obstructions, everything is cleaned. Uh, the bed plate has been thoroughly cleaned, uh, removing of the old sealant from here all the way through. That has been cleaned. So this block, block is pretty much prepped and ready for build. So you guys can see the bed plate is uh, pretty uh, clean as well, right? Nicely clean, the boards has been cleaned, uh, ready for a build. So the first thing what we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to get this back up. Oh. We're going to go ahead and do the piston ring end gap measurements on all six bores. So we've got brand new BMW rings here. We're going to be checking the ring gap as part of the reassembly. So. The first thing we're going to start to do to start to build this block is that we're going to be checking the ring end gaps on all six cylinder bores. As you can see here, we have brand new rings from BMW. So what I've done here, I've gone ahead and lay all the rings out uh, from cylinder one through six that I'll be testing. I want to just like to, I like to be very organized and efficient. So I've labeled all the rings for the cylinders that I'm going to do the checks in. Uh, starting with the top ring, second ring, oil ring, and the uh, oil, uh, whatever you call that, the oil, the oil spring ring. Uh, so we've got this all set up. And once we start to take the, uh, the ring end gaps, uh, we may need to kind of flip flop between cylinders on the rings. Depends on what readings we get because... Sometimes you, uh, it may be beneficial uh, to move number two ring uh, to number four cylinder to get a better ring end gap. So let's go ahead and set this up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, you guys will be able to see that I've got three level of measurement. Uh, those are the position really I'm going to be checking the ring end gaps of the top ring and the middle ring and if the uh, oil ring calls for a measurement we'll go ahead and check that as well so typically what i like to do is this bore is a 84 millimeter and the stroke is an 89.6 millimeter so i typically like to measure about 10 millimeter from the top so your first mark is at 10 10 millimeter and then your bottom mark is about 10 millimeter up from the 89.6 stroke so that's right about uh, 80 millimeter or 79 millimeter that's your bottom mark from the top and then the middle is at about 45 millimeter which is the middle of the two mark so we're going to take measurements at each of those positions of the ring end gap and then uh, we'll go from there so let's go ahead and see what we got So I've gone ahead and positioned all six number one top compression ring at the top of each bore, uh, one through six. 
I've just got it right at the top and I've orientated each of the rings in the same position that they will be installed into the piston. So the gaps, are, all the ring gaps are positioned right here at the same position just to stay consistent to how they're going to be installed and orientated onto the piston. So uh, one thing to note, uh, typically you use the piston uh, to push down the ring and square it up. But on the top measurement, at the 10 millimeter measurement, this, this thing is flexing quite a bit and it doesn't give you a nice square measurement. So we'll, we'll go ahead and I'll show you what I'll do. We'll, we'll go ahead and push this down just a little bit just to get it in the bore, each, each of them, just a little bit. Then we're going to use our digital caliper. I've got the flat uh, uh, depth base installed and I'm, I've got it set to 10 millimeter and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that these rings are exactly at 10 millimeter all around on one through six. That'll make sure that we've got a good measurement on these rings at 10 millimeter. Now you don't have to use a digital caliper. If you've got a steel scale uh, that you can use, uh, that, sh that should be fine. You, you just want to make sure the ring is at the same position all around. One thing I want to show you guys, when you're measuring these, I'm just going to pull this up a little bit. You're going to find if, if you push down here and you go all the way around, the, the piston may want to hinge around one point. So what you like to do is to just push up the ring with there while you're holding the scale right there. So you know you've got good uh, 10 millimeter or the measurement that you're looking at. Make sure it's touching and it's consistent. So we're gonna go ahead and take the gap reading at the uh, on boards one through six for the top rings and we'll record those dimensions. And then we'll push all six rings down to the middle position, take those uh, dimensions, and then we'll push it down to the bottom position and we'll take those dimensions. So here we've got a 10 thousands. I can't even get this in. It's snug, it's very snug. I'd say that's a nine. Nine and a half point zero zero nine So we've got all the rings one through six at the middle position. Um, just for my preference, I, I use the uh, digital caliper just to square it up. It was pretty much square, but just, just for my peace of mind, I want to make sure everything is at the per perfect position to get that correct ring gap. So we went ahead and did that. We're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and take a check on the bottom position ring gap. So that's the uh, the bottom position measurement on number one compression ring at the bottom of the bore, approximately 80 millimeters from the top of the deck. So 
all these measurements on the new rings are well within BMW specification. Uh, BMW calls, I believe, for nine and a half to twelve thousandths, and we're right around, we're between nine and a half to ten and a half. So very good. Uh, we'll go ahead and check the number two compression ring. I'm gonna go ahead and check one, and then um, and show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, just another note. <clears throat> When you guys are taking these rings out, uh, try not to just go in there and drag the ring out. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and flip the piston ring up vertically with the gap up and then compress the ring, overlap the gap and bring it out. So if you guys can see here, so the ring was like this. I went ahead and inverted it and then I went ahead and I overlapped the ring and I brought it out. Okay. So I went ahead and installed the number two compression ring and I've set it to the 10 millimeter position above the deck. Uh, one thing to note, if you guys uh, want to try to stay consistent. So if you recall a number one compression ring, I had the ring gap over here. Number two, I have the ring gap over there, 180 degree apart similar to how will we be installed in the piston okay and uh you've got the markings this this is uh marking is on top uh also on these rings i'll take one out and i'll show you guys here but there's a scraper on the bottom i'll show you right now so this one here uh remind how we want to take that out so I'm trying to hold the camera and do this at the same time bring that out so you guys can see here these rings has got a scraper on the bottom here to scrape the oil back down as the piston comes down. A lot of times uh, the number two rings are the heavily worn rings in these engines. And a lot of times you've got the carbon buildup that was just built up around these scrapers. So just, just more information. Uh, so scraper on the bottom, letters or numbers on top. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, number two compression ring measurement. Uh, just a repeat of what we did on number one. So you guys pretty much got that. Okay So We've got all our ring gaps So we've got our top compression and our middle compression. No uh, all control gaps are needed So the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna check our uh, block uh, deck height uh, flatness. I've got a straight edge here. And so the first way I'm gonna go is I'm, I'm gonna set it across the middle of all the cylinder bores. And I'm gonna check the, uh, with a feeler gauge, uh, what, what the gap reading is underneath here. And then I'm gonna go uh, crossway like this here, do the same thing. Then I'm gonna go this way and I'll do the same thing. Because this is not that long enough, then I'll extend it this way to make sure that I've got no gaps. Same thing over here in the middle, and then as well over here. Okay, so um, let's get started. So I'm going to start with a 1000 and I'll go up to a 2000 uh, feeler gap. Hey guys, uh, well that's it for today on this uh, N55 uh, build. Um, Stay tuned for the next episodes to come on this uh, build process. Uh, check out um, uh, my other episodes uh, to come. Like I said, I'm going into a very detailed DIY build on the N55. Um, also check out my other uh, episodes for other engine builds. I've got uh, go ahead and leave a comment, leave a question. Let me know what you think. All right, guys. Thanks.